The fires are burning behind the river. The Tatars are driving their captives. Our village is burned and our property is plundered. My old mother is sabered and my dear wife is taken into captivity. This was a common experience in Eastern and Central Europe during the height of the Ottoman power. Millions of people from Poland, Ukraine, Russia, Hungary and other countries were kidnapped by Turkish or Tatar raiders, chained and then sent to Constantinople to be sold into slavery. Some of them were lucky and became generals, governors and even queens. Meanwhile the less lucky ones died on the march of exhaustion or chained to oars where they worked themselves to death. Welcome to our video on Ottoman slavery where we explore the lives of the white slaves in the Eastern Mediterranean. Before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and enjoy. Slaves were a major part of the Ottoman economy and administration throughout its 600-year-old history. However, Ottoman slavery was different than Western slavery. Slaves could only be taken from hostile nations who were not believers of the Muslim faith and during times of war. Most of the slaves were captured during raids. These raids were focused on three different geographies. The smallest one was Central Europe and Austria. Ottoman army took hundreds of thousands of captives during their long wars with Austria and Ottoman raiders attacked as far as Bavaria. The second route was the Barbary slave trade. This route was mainly controlled by Algerians, Tunisians and Moroccans, all Ottoman vassals except for Morocco. Pirates from these nations constantly attacked Italian and Spanish coasts. More than a million people were enslaved by these pirates and sold all across Muslim nations of Mediterranean. However, the most significant route was the Eastern European one. Here, the Crimean Khanate, a vassal of the Ottoman Empire, ran the trade. Raiders from Crimea raided Poland, Romania and Russia yearly. It is thought that almost 2.5 million slaves were brought to the slave markets of Constantinople through this route. The process was simple. Tatars on horseback would ride to undefended cities and villages in the countryside and kidnap the civilians. Sometimes Tatars lingered around and asked for an immediate ransom as it was easier to get paid right there. However, most of the time they herded the captives to the Crimean Peninsula. By the time actual military force showed up they would be long gone. These raids were devastating, especially at times of war, when countries' militaries were busy fighting. In one raid in late 17th century, 400,000 captives were taken from Russia. It was such a degree that Russia had an official budget for ransoms of these captives. In another instance, Russian diplomats that brought the Crimean Khan his ransom for these captives were enslaved themselves and held for ransom. After being captured, these slaves were marched to the Crimean Peninsula. It was a devastating march. Captives were tied together and walked without rest for days, with no food and little water. This hurry was not without a reason. Tatars feared a counterattack from locals, for it wasn't uncommon for the captives to be freed by friendly forces. Many died in these forced marches, but most survived and reached the port of Kaffa, the slaver's port. Kaffa was the main slave trade hub, located right at the tip of the peninsula. Tens of thousands of slaves here were bought by Armenian, Greek, Jewish and Turkish slavers then shipped to the final destination, Constantinople. In Constantinople, the slaves were vetted first by the government officials. Roughly half of them were bought by the imperial government for various duties. It would not be wrong to say that the whole government was run by slaves. Roughly 80% of the generals and ministers were slave boys educated in the imperial palace. The elite army of the empire, the janissaries, were also all slaves. However, these high-ranked officials were slaves taken by a different method, devshirme. Basically, they were recruited from Christian Balkan families at a very young age and then raised by foster Turkish families. And they were in fact free men in anything but name. They were paid wages and were allowed to have families, open businesses, However, for those that were captured in raids, a different fate awaited. 
Men were often bought by the government to be oarsmen in warships. This was the most brutal form of slavery in the Ottoman Empire. These men were chained to their posts 24 hours a day, in a way that only allowed them to move just enough to pull oars. They were underfed and worked under open sun, without shirts. A lot of them were severely sunburned, and mortality rate was very high. The government needed slaves for more humane jobs as well though. Palace servants were taken among these slaves. The beautiful and smart young girls were taken into the harem to be trained and to be married to sultans, princes and other government officials when they grew up. The imperial harem had many intricacies and would require a video of its own. The leftovers from the palace were now open to the public. Beautiful women were worth a lot of money, of course to be used as sex slaves. Those that managed to get a marriage were luckier as it meant becoming a free woman. Customers were allowed to inspect these women to assess their value. There were other factors that affected the price as well. For example, the Russians were worth less, for they were considered wild and unruly. Meanwhile, the Polish were the most valued as they were seen as smart. However, the use of sex slave wasn't the most common one, as most people needed slaves for more practical reasons. A lot of them were bought to be employed in workshops and domestic jobs. Sometimes women were bought to be wet nurses. In some communities, families did not want to marry off their sons and daughters of the other families, and bought young boys and girls. These were raised by this family and then married to their kids. This way, they kept family in itself, but also avoided inbreeding. There were some positive aspects that differentiated the Ottoman slavery from European and American chattel slavery. First of all, slavery wasn't to death. As a rule, black slaves were freed after seven years of service, and white slaves after nine years, as white slaves were more valuable. This was due to Islam's pressure to free slaves. Especially those that converted to Islam were freed often to encourage and reward their conversion. Another way to be freed was buying your freedom. It is unclear how slaves made money to buy their freedom, however, it was a fairly common instance. There are even records of slaves who bought their freedom returning to their homeland richer than before. Slaves also faced no hardships when integrating back to the society. For this reason, most of them did not return to their homelands after being free men and remained in the Ottoman Empire as free citizens. Though this system increased the number of the slaves taken. Since slaves had to be released every decade, the demand was never satisfied, fueling new raids the slaves also had rights and were in completely properties. Owners had the responsibility to dress and feed them adequately. Lady Montague, the wife of a British diplomat in Constantinople, said that an average Ottoman slave was better fed than an average British peasant. The slaves had the right to go to courts if they were mistreated. In one instance, a black female slave sued her master for overworking her and by court order she was allowed to leave her master. There were also some other lucky examples. Lady Montague talks about a Spanish woman who was kidnapped by a Turkish admiral. Her brothers quickly paid her ransom, but the Spanish lady refused to go back as she had fallen in love with the Turkish admiral. To Lady Montague's much surprise, the Spanish lady told her that the only thing waited her in Spain was a nunnery, but here her handsome, young and tender husband laid the Turkish magnificence at her feet. Another interesting story is told by August von Hochstausen, a Prussian noble that accompanied a Russian warship during a Russo-Turkish war. The Russian ship captured a Turkish slave ship coming from Circassia, nowadays a part of Russia just north of Georgia. In announcing to the girls their liberation, the Russian general ordered them to be informed that the choice was open to them, to be sent back to their homes with the prince of their own race, or to marry Russians or Cossacks of their free choice, to return with me to Germany where all the women are free, or lastly to accompany the Turkish captain who would sell them in the slave market of, at Constantinople. The reader will hardly credit that, unanimously and without a moment's consideration, they all exclaimed, to Constantinople. August von Hochstausen might be surprised, but for these Circassian girls it wasn't slavery but opportunity.
Circassian families willingly sold their daughters to marry rich men in the Ottoman Empire and live better lives in Constantinople. The slavery came to an end eventually. Crimean Khanate and Circassia were invaded by Russia in 19th century and Barbary states were pacified by the United States and later all were colonized by France. As it tends to be the case in history, slavery's morality started being questioned when it became impractical. Invention of machinery reduced the Ottoman economy's need for more slaves, which had become extremely expensive to acquire. In 1830, the Ottoman government finally banned slavery, but slave trade ran by gangs continued as late as 1930s in Anatolia and Turkey. Thank you for watching this video. Obviously this video does not condone or try to make light of slavery. Possibly millions perished in this trade and all of them were certainly traumatized. However, unlike the western world, slavery never became a problem that caused systemic discrimination that continued for centuries. Unlike the west, slavery no longer scars the population with its lasting effects and I wish to shed light on the reasons of these different outcomes. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked the video, please subscribe and leave a thumbs up. May you never wake up and see a group of Tatar raiders approaching to your city. We will see you in the next episode.